Hey guys, so I know it's been a while since I've come up with a video for you guys, but I've been giving it a lot of thought of how I can make my videos better and more enjoyable for you guys. And one of the ways that I was able to figure this out was to build a camera jib. I've been doing a lot of research online and I was trying to figure out which camera jib was the best one, what was good about each one, which one was the best value for the money spent. And I came to the conclusion that I could build one much cheaper and way more tailored to my needs than to go out and buy one that's on average between $600 $700. So what I have behind me is about $150 worth of materials between the stand, the bolts, uh, the weight bar, everything else that's included in it. So one thing that this thing will actually help with my videos will be giving me more dynamic shots which are easier for you guys to view. For example, if I'm cutting on a table saw, I'll be able to give you guys some overhead shots of the table saw instead of constantly seeing the side angle shot where you don't really get as good of a view and you can't really see. Also this will give you more of a dynamic shot because when I'm doing product reveals I can give you a nice sweeping motion across it. It's nice and smooth and I don't have to worry about anything shaking. Alright so let's start out now with the parts that I used in the making of this project. So for the metal I used one by three by quarter inch aluminum. I wanted the structural strength of the three inches vertically and the one inch width wise. This gave me a lot of strength and was overkill for the size that you're seeing behind me. But what I'm planning on doing is extending onto it another four feet in order to be able to give you those nice overhead shots without anything actually being in my way and causing a safety issue. So for the stand, I went out and I got a speaker stand. I got it off eBay, it ended up only being $30. I used a speaker stand and a speaker mount. And the way that I set this up was I bolted a bearing to the bottom of it on the speaker mount so that the bearing is what actually will turn and pivot the mount and everything else will be solved. So basically this is just a stand. Now this thing will extend up to six feet but it doesn't give you the smooth shots you want. So you're going to want to keep this stand down low. Alright, so for mounting the camera bracket, what I ended up doing was I made a template of the actual outside shape of the bracket. What I was going for the look was to keep it nice and flush with the front. And making this template made it very easy for me to determine where my bolt holes needed to be. And that way I wouldn't have any binding going into the pivoting of the actual head unit itself. So my next step is going to be to set up the end with the head unit on it. What I did was I took apart my Pro-Am bracket and I'm using this hole for the mounting purposes. So what I did was I got my bushing and measured that out to 3 8 of an inch and the look that I'm going for is going to be flush with the front roughly right here. So you can see that it's flush on the front. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to drill through. This is an inch and a half down and whatever the actual measurement is for your specific bracket across. So now that we have our hole drilled for our mounting of the head, we're going to assemble it. We're going to put in the two bushings first. Now those are in nice and tight. We're going to grab our head unit piece, put our screw in first, attach our spacer, bring it up. Push it through the bushing, add our other spacer in, put on our washer, and our nut. And this is a lock nut, so once you tighten it down, 
it's going to stay where it's at. But there we have it. The head is mounted up. Give you a little bit of a side shot. It's nice and flush with the front. And exactly the way I want it. This way, when I package it up, I could just lift it up, fold it under, and it's a lot more compact. So for this joint, this is the one main joint after the head unit. I wanted to make sure that I was nice and firmly attached. So what I ended up using was four bolts. I'll get into this in the explanation of it. But as you can see, it is completely straight and level. And it is also very solid. It's mounted two bolts on each side holding these spacers in between. Alright, so next I'm going to show you how I'm going to attach the sections together. A lot of the companies use big solid blocks which add extra weight to your camera jib. What I'm going to use is 3 quarter inch by 3 quarter inch solid aluminum that I'm going to cut down out of a 6 by 6 inch piece I got off eBay. And all it's going to do, I forgot the correct pattern, is it's going to go in there approximately 3 inches. I'm going to have a bolt here and up here. To attach two pieces together, there's going to be one on top and one on the bottom. And I'll have plenty of room in between to run my HDMI cables for the monitor. So here I have my DeWalt compound miter saw set up with a non-ferrous saw blade. Uh, that's going to allow me to cut the aluminum quite easy. I set up a little jig so I have a stop for my blocks every time because the center is not exactly three quarter inch by three quarter inch inside each one of the one by three tubes. So I have to make adjustments so that it will fit. Now that we have all our holes drilled, next thing we need to do is put in some threads. So what I'm using, just as a personal preference, is I'm using an M8 1.25 tap in order to put the threads in. So just a personal preference, you can use whatever you want. Alright, now that you have all your holes tapped, the next step is to drill holes into the main 1x3 to match up with the holes you've already tapped. Now these ones are going to be a little bit larger so that the bolt can go through freely. Alright, so now I have the two connecting pieces into the one one by three. All I need to do is connect the other side. I've labeled them top and bottom just to make sure that my holes are guaranteed to line up in case any measurements were off. Now I did a test fit before with just one bar in there. One bar was enough to hold this completely perfectly fine. There was zero twisting because it was three quarters of an inch thick. Since I labeled them up, I can guarantee that all the bolts are going to match up. Now that I have the two pieces bolted together, you can see that there is absolutely zero bending or flexing at the joint. I was able to do this with just one piece and it was still just as solid. Two pieces is a little overkill, but when I plan on extending this out to longer lengths, I feel like I'm going to need a little bit of over-engineering at this point. 
So for the bracket, I decided to make it out of eighth inch aluminum. I ended up making it three inches wide, 12 inches tall, with a three by three inch base. And I mounted that to the bearing I was previously talking about. It's a two bolt bearing with a greasable fitting. For this, because of the bearing, this project will swing and pivot very freely. No issues whatsoever, nice and quiet, nice and smooth, and also nice and balanced. You don't have any issues with it whatsoever. You can see how we welded a piece of pipe in between in order to bolt into the bracket and use bolts to hold the 1x3s in place. I also have some brass bushings in between on either side of the actual 1x3 to hold it in place of where the bracket is at. So where I went a little bit different on this project than most other camera jibs was for this top, I used a cable. Now the cable replaced a piece of aluminum which I just didn't want to have to deal with. Replacing a cable for the extended lengths is a whole lot easier than replacing pieces of aluminum that are very thin and can bend very easily. The purpose of this cable is to allow the camera head to go up and down and remain level. As you can see as I'm moving it, it's remaining level throughout the entire motion of the camera from the floor to the ceiling. Now as long as you have enough weight on the end of the bracket you don't have any issues with the cable getting slacked. Now I can I don't need to have my camera all the way at the end in order to have this cable tight. I can actually have it just mounted straight on to the actual camera mount itself without having the extension as plenty of weight. I just put it out there because it's easier for me to balance and it gives me a little bit more flexibility when it comes to it. So since I'm going to be using a cable instead of an actual piece of aluminum or a bar in order to maintain level with the head unit, I need to set up the cable in a way that will work with this project. So what I'm going to use is a thimble. I have eighth inch wire and a ferrule and I'm going to use the swagging tool in order to crimp the wire down together. Alright, so now that we have the cable set up on the one end, next it's time to attach it. And how I'm going to attach it to this Pro-Am mount. Normally on the Pro-Am mount there's a bolt here and you attach a piece of aluminum uh, which tends to bend and flex a little bit. I am going to use quarter inch all thread. I have three nuts, four washers, and a wing nut. Alright, so the easiest way I found to attach my cable to the Pro Am mount was to use some all thread. I used three nuts, four washers, and one wing nut. And then I'm going to use this adjuster to fine tune my angle to either level or if I want it angled vertical or down a little bit. This will give me the flexibility to add, I believe it's up to two and a half inches of cable worth of adjustment to make sure that my shots are completely level. Another advantage of this and using the cable is that I can add length to it without having to change anything. 
All I need to do is add an extra cable, but all my mounts and hookups are going to be the same. All right, so for the weight bar, what I ended up going with was a one inch piece by 12 inches long of solid aluminum. I went to Walmart and I bought a five pound weight and two two and a half pound weights. All I need right now is the five pound weight and the two and a half pound weight, and it's more than sufficient. I have a little counterbalance weight back here, which is a leftover piece of aluminum from cutting the aluminum, which you saw earlier. And as you could tell, this thing holds wherever I want to. I can angle it down and it holds, angle it up, and it'll hold right where I want it. So it's very well balanced, no issues. If I need a little bit more, I could slide this bracket out and it'll balance it out a little bit more or push it back in and it takes a little bit less, depending on what your camera is. I want to make it flexible because in time, I plan on upgrading to an actual video camera instead of using my DSLR to make these videos. So what I got for the counterweight bar is 12 inches of one inch solid aluminum. I drilled a hole and tapped it with the M8 1.25 tap that I've been using on the entire piece so that I only need one hex bit in order to assemble this. And I also got from Tractor Supply a two pack of shaft collars. They're one inch inside diameter. They have some weight to it so it'll help add weight. Since we already drilled our hole, all we need to do is push our weight bar in, use our bolt, line it up nice, tighten it on down, by tightening it down it will actually pull the bar up to the top making it sturdy right now and then we can add our weight and our shaft collars and it's ready to be used alright guys so now that I've shown you how I've made what is standing behind me this current camera jib so I want to let you know that this is just going to be phase one of the camera jib this is the basics of building it. In the next video coming up, I don't have a set time for it, but I'm going to be adding a monitor to this, hooking up my camera via HDMI, and I am also going to be adding different features to it, like a lockout mechanism so that I can set it to a specific height and actually lock it out, not rely on it actually being balanced. I'll show you how I build those and how they work. If you have any comments or suggestions or notice something that you didn't exactly like this video, please let me know down below so that I can help make this project a better project and it will help other people out. I want to make this the best that I possibly can for you guys so that you enjoy my videos as much as you can. So if you've lasted this long in the video, please hit the like button down below and subscribe to see more upcoming projects. Also share the video as much as you can. These things help me out in order to make these projects for you. Thanks for watching.